Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to another edition of Photoshop for Video, your weekly podcast to learn how to get more out of Adobe Photoshop for creating video graphics. Today, we're going to take a look at how to age a photo, and I'm going to share a few techniques with you. We're going to only use built-in things that come with Photoshop, so you'll need no third-party tools to accomplish this. Let's jump in. So I've got a simple image here, and we're going to go ahead and do a few things to age this a bit further. One of the first things I like to do is to go ahead and duplicate the background image, so I always have a copy of that. And let's call this top copy flower. And we're going to go ahead and age this a little bit with some distressing. Now, in order to control this better, we're going to use a series of layers. I'm going to go ahead and open up the Actions palette here, and I'm going to go to my Textures. Now, if you don't have these loaded, you just click here, and you can choose Textures, and they'll load into the Actions palette. The textures we have here are fairly varied, so let's take advantage here of this older one here by using a parchment paper. And we'll go ahead and click Play. That's going to go ahead and make a new pattern here, and it's going to prompt us to go ahead and load some filters into the dialog box when it comes up. It says 71, 1, and top left. Now those just equate to the controls you have here. So it said 71, 1, and top left. You don't have to use those values. That's just what it encourages you to do to create this sort of paper texture. And there we have it. We have this nice modeled texture. Now, we're going to go ahead and use this here and combine it, but first let's get rid of some of the color in this image. To do that, I'm going to go ahead and add the black and white adjustment layer. If you're not using Photoshop CS3, you can experiment with the channel mixer. But under CS3 or newer, the channel mixer has been replaced by the black and white adjustment command. Here we go, and the way this works is we can click on the image and drag, and it will go after those details. So here, we're affecting the balance of the reds in the image for that flower. That looks pretty good. Let's go after the leaves down here, which are going to be green, and you see as we drag there how the greens are being affected. I want those to pop a little bit more, but in this area, we want them to go down. And you can always play with these on your own to come up with a look that gives you the right amount of contrast and aging. Next, I'm going to go ahead and click the Tint button to go ahead and fire that off, and by default, a sepia tone is chosen. We'll go with a slightly desaturated look there, and click OK. Let's go ahead and turn on this layer 1, which is the texture, and with the Move tool selected, we'll harness that great keyboard shortcut of Shift Plus, and that lets us step through and blend that texture with the image. Now, that overlay mode's looking pretty nice there. It's a little bit intense. I kind of like soft light too. Notice without and with. We're getting just a little bit of texturizing happening to the image, which looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and choose Edit Select All or Command A, and then Edit Copy Merged. This will place a merged copy on top when we hit Paste, and that's a flattened copy while all the layers are left down below. Let's go ahead and do Filter Blur and take advantage of the more accurate lens blur filter. We're going to go ahead and push this out a little bit, and let's have the highlights bloom so the whites start to spike a little bit. That looks pretty good. And we'll click OK. And all we're going to do is take that blurred copy and blend it with the layer down below. Remember, Blending modes give you a lot of flexibility when it comes to creating a nice textured look. By using blend modes, you can get lots of subtleties as the layers interact. We'll go ahead and do the Shift Plus shortcut there to step through our modes, and in a Multiply mode, that gives us a really nice punch where the blacks are getting super rich. I'm going to go ahead and back that down just a little bit so it's not so intense. And let's finish this here with a gradient overlay. We'll just do a regular gradient adjustment layer, and we're going to use the black to white gradient and change that to radial mode. Let's reverse that here and adjust the angle till we get a nice vignette. That works pretty well, and I'll set that to multiply mode, which will drop out the lighter areas, and we'll lower the opacity. And what you see there 
is a really nice vignette going on with this material as it gets darker at the edges. To finesse this, I'm going to do a little bit of grain. So let's add one more layer here and we're going to choose Edit Fill. And what we want to fill this with is the neutral 50% gray. Now, when you invoke the fill command, you can access 50% gray. This is neutral. So if we apply a filter to the 50% gray layer, we can easily blend it with the layers down below and maintain precise control over that filtered layer. I'll go ahead and click OK. And what I'm going to immediately do is convert this to a smart object. Remember, once something's a smart object, you can add filters to it and maintain flexible control. Filter, noise, adds noise. Let's use Gaussian and monochromatic and adjust the amount. That's looking pretty good. I'm just going to soften that out just a little bit here. Filter blur, Gaussian blur. Put that at a value of two or three just to soften that. Let's try four. That looks pretty good. Have a nice gentler texture. Looks a little bit like a denim. And we can go ahead here and play with modes, like there's soft light. So if you look at that, we've done a pretty good job. In fact, let's take a look here at the history palette and we're going to add a new snapshot for our ending state. Here's where we started. Here's where we ended up in just a few clicks. And if you know anything about actions, we could have recorded all of this as an action, which would have let us batch process this material and apply this look to any other image or even a video clip. If you want to know more about actions, just take a look at our podcast page at photoshopforvideo.com where you can access the back episodes. We've got lots of episodes about using actions. For Photoshop for Video, I'm Rich Harrington. Thanks for checking out our new episode this week. And of course, be sure to subscribe so you can get the new episode for free every week.